So today's video is on taxis and kinesis. So first we have to look at some keywords. So our first keyword is stimulus. So this is a detectable change in environment. For example, increasing light intensity because we can detect this change in environment. It's a changing of light intensity. And a response is an action carried out by an organism due to the stimulus, an action carried out due to a change in environment. A receptor is a cell that can detect a stimulus, so it detects a change in environment. An effector in a, um, in a mammal is a muscle or gland that carries out the response. It carries out the action due to a stimulus. So organisms with the best responses to changes in environment tend to survive. So because they have the best response to stimuli, they tend to survive it. And if you survive, that means this organism is more likely to pass on their um, advantageous alleles to the next generation. And so this puts a selective pressure favouring organisms with the most appropriate responses. So this means, um, when we say selective pressure, this is any reason that reduces the likelihood of reproductive success of a portion of the population driving natural selection. So this basically means any reason, for example, um, uh, res responding to a stimulus in a less favourable way, it will reduce the likelihood of some organisms being able to produce offspring. And this means that the, po the population with the best responses are able to produce their offspring instead. And this drives natural selection, the survival of the fittest, because they have the best response. They are able to outcompete the organisms with the less favourable response. And this drives natural selection as they're able to pass on their alleles because they survive. So there is this selective pressure favouring appropriate responses. So the first form of movement is taxis. So taxis is a simple response whose direction is determined by the direction of a stimuli. So we can see that here as if we were a little organism here, if we were traveling in one direction, we would see a stimulus and we'd think, ah, we need to change our direction towards this stimulus. So it's a simple response, just simply turning and changing direction determined by this direction of the stimulus. So an organism would move its entire body towards a favor favorable stimulus. So that's in this example, it's turning towards this stimulus, or it could be turning away from an unfavorable one. So if this was an unfavorable stimulus, it would simply turn and move in the other direction. So it's a simple response determined by the direction of a stimulus. So it is a direct response to a change in environment. It's, a, it's directly determined by this stimulus. So there are two forms of taxis, and the first is positive taxis. So this is towards the favorable stimulus, like in our example. And there is negative taxis. So this is away from an unfavorable stimulus. So this would be turning in this direction and moving away from an unfavorable change in environment. So what are our examples of taxis? So we put this into practice. So there is positive phototaxis. So this is an example of when a single celled algae moves towards light and it moves towards light so it can photosynthesize more to manufacture food. So positive phototaxis is when a organism moves towards a light stimulus. So it changes its direction to move towards light, a simple response towards the stimulus. Then there is negative phototaxis. So this is when earthworms move away from light as it's likely to take them into the soil. So if they move away from light, they're more likely to go into the soil, which is dark, and going into the soil allows them to conserve water, find food, and avoid predators. So it increases their likelihood of survival. So negative phototaxis is away from an unfavorable light stimulus.
So a simple response. Again, simply just away from the light. And then there is positive chemotaxis. So some bacteria move towards areas of high glucose concentrations. And this is because this increases their food supply. So positive chemotaxis is moving towards a chemical stimulus, a chemical change in environment. In this example, glucose, high glucose concentrations. The next portion of the video is on kinesis, which is another form of movement. So kinesis is a response where the organism changes its speed, it moves, and the rate of changing direction to find or stay in favourable conditions. So this is quite a lengthy definition, but we can see from the diagram here how this works. So it's a response when the organisms change its speed. So it's changing its speed and it's changing the rate it changes direction. So you can see here, changing direction is less frequent, whereas if you go here, the changing of direction is really rapid. So it's a response where it changes its speed and changes the rate of direction changing to stay or find a favorable condition. So we'll look at how and what this means. So if an organism crosses a sharp boundary between a favourable and unfavourable environment, so this could be moving into a light area from a dark area, so a very sharp boundary between favourable and something it finds unfavourable. This will cause the organism to increase the speed that it's moving and increase the rate of direction change. So that can be, for example, here it's moving very quickly and changing direction very rapidly. And this is to increase its chances of getting back into the favourable conditions. So this means if it crosses a sharp boundary, it thinks that if it moves really quickly and changes direction really rapidly, it has a higher chance of moving back into that favourable environment it's just crossed out of. And if an organism moves considerably far into an unfavourable environment, this means that once it crossed the sharp boundary, it, when it moved rapidly and changing direction, it didn't actually cross back into the favourable environment. It actually just went further into the unfavourable environment. So if it moves further into the unfavourable environment, it will slow the rate of turning. And um, this is shown in this top part here. The rate of turning is less and it travels more in straight lines. So it travels in straight lines for periods of time before turning. So you can see here, it travels in a straight line, then turns. And this is to increase its chances of finding a favourable environment. Because if it rapidly changes direction um, quickly, like down here, it's more likely to stay in the same area. But if it travels in straight lines, then turns, it's more likely to cover a larger area and therefore increases the chance of finding a favourable environment. So you can see kinesis involves... Um, changing the speed and the rate of changing direction depending on the how close you are to a favourable environment or how far the organism thinks they may be from a favourable environment. So we're going to have a look of an example of kinesis. So wood lice. So wood lice lose water from their bodies in dry conditions and this would mean that they would not survive. So they want to stay in these damp areas. So we have here a diagram of a damp and dry soil. So when wood lice move from a damp to dry, so crossing this sharp boundary here, they will rapidly change direction to increase their chances of re-entering into this damp area. So if they move into this dry area, they will rapidly change direction and hopefully they would get back into this damp area here. So that is their first form of kinesis response. But once they are back in the damp area, so they've 
just manage to get back into the damp area, they will slow their speed and they will slow their rate of changing direction to increase the chances of staying in the damp area. Because if they continued to move at this rapid pace changing direction, there is a high chance that they would recross the boundary into the dry area. So they'll move slower and change direction less so they can stay in the damp area. And this is their second form of kinesis. And however, if they did not re-enter the damp area when they crossed into the dry and they moved further into the dry area, they will travel in straight lines and make infrequent sharp turns. And this is to increase their chances of refinding the damp area. So if you were in the middle and you'd found yourself in the middle of a dry area, making short, rapid changes would not get you any closer, really, to the boundary between dry and damp. So they'd move in long, straight lines, changing direction um, infrequently to increase their chances of making it back into the damp area. So the woodlice want to be in the damp area as it increases their chance of survival by decreasing their chance of drying out. And these three forms of kinesis are how they try to stay in the damp area by either rapidly changing direction when they cross the sharp boundary or they slow their speed and change of direction when in the damp to increase chances of staying there. Or if they're in the dry, they will travel in long straight lines with infrequent sharp turns to try find the damp again. So now we're going to look at taxis versus kinesis. So what is the difference between these two types of movement? And you can see it in the diagram here. So taxis is a directional response. So it's a response in a specific direction. So in this example, it is specifically um, choosing the direction towards the stimulus, a simple response to move towards it. So it has its direction. It is directional. It knows to move in the specific direction towards the stimulus. Whereas kinesis is a non-directional response. So its response is not correlated with the direction of the stimulus. It is completely random. As we can see here, it's not a direct direction. It's not moving in one direction. It is a non-directional response. It's random movements that may find it a favourable condition. It is all based on chance. And the rate of kinesis, so the rate that it changes direction and its speed, is dependent on the stimulus intensity. So as we saw in the wood lice example, the further it was into the dry conditions, the slower it, um, it changed direction and the slower its speed was. But the closer it was to a favourable environment because it crossed a sharp boundary, it knew that it was close to a favourable stimulus. So its rate of direction change increased. So the rate of kinesis, the rate of changing direction, is dependent on stimulus intensity. Whereas taxis is less correlated to stimulus intensity. And this is because it is just a simple movement towards or away from a stimulus. And then lastly, we're going to look at a couple tropisms. So a tropism is when is a growth of a part of a plant in response to a directional stimulus. So it is a growth of a portion of the plant, not the entire plant, in response to a directional change in environment. So the first type is positive phototropism. So this is when shoots grow towards the light. It's positive, so it's towards the light stimulus. And uh, the shoots want to grow towards the light because it will maximise their photosynthesis. And then there is negative gravitropism gravitropism. So this is when the shoots grow against gravity. So negative because it's away from the stimulus, away from the gravity stimulus. So the shoots will grow against gravity. So they will grow upwards instead of down. And this is to increase their chances of finding light. 
Then there is negative phototropism. So this is away from a light stimulus. So the roots will grow away from the light. And this is to increase their chance of finding soil. So if they grow away from the light, they're more likely to find the dark soil. And then there is positive gravitropism. So this is when the roots grow with gravity. So positive towards the gravity stimulus. So with gravity, they'll grow down. And this is again to increase their chances of growing down into the soil, being able to pick up and absorb all the nutrients they need and to ground the plant.